Welcome to CoreLogic's monthly housing market update. This month, we're covering off from the performance of the housing market through to the end of October 2016. The rate of capital gains remains reasonably strong across the Australian housing market, at least at a macro level. Based on the October results from CoreLogic's Hedonic Home Value Index, dwelling values moved half a percent higher over the month to be 2.7% higher over the quarter and 7.5% higher over the past 12 months. A year ago, the annual growth rate was stronger, with values 10.1% higher over the year, but importantly, the market was softening at this time last year. Capital City dwelling values recorded a negative change over the final quarter of 2015, and auction clearance rates had fallen to the low 60% range before dipping even lower during December. This softness has well and truly dissipated on the back of lower mortgage rates, tight stock levels and a rebound in investment activity. In the current market, clearance rates are still above 75% across the combined capitals, while auction results in Sydney have consistently been above 80% throughout spring. CoreLogic's estimate of settled sales has shown a recent improvement after trending lower over the past year. Additionally, investment activity has been steadily rising since the latest cycle of interest rate cuts, with the value of investment-related housing finance commitments up 10% between May and August this year. Additionally, stock levels generally remain low despite the recent seasonal rise in listing numbers. Newly advertised properties are tracking 3.6% lower than at the same time last year across the combined capitals. With stock levels remaining short, particularly in the hottest markets, there's also been a recent improvement in selling metrics. The average selling time has dropped from 50 days to 39 days in September, and discounting rates have also fallen to the lowest level since March 2015. Low mortgage rates are likely to be one of the primary drivers of the strong housing market conditions. The discounted average standard variable mortgage rate is tracking at 4.5% and the three-year fixed mortgage rate is averaging an even lower 4%. The cost of housing debt hasn't been this low since the early 1960s. While the headline figures remain supportive of further capital gains, not all housing markets are seeing positive conditions. The weakest capital cities remain Perth and Darwin, where dwelling values have fallen by almost 10% since peaking in 2014. CoreLogic's Hedonic Index recorded a rise in dwelling values, as well as in the volume of settled sales across both cities during October, which may indicate these markets are approaching the bottom of their cycle. However, we aren't yet seeing any evidence that consistent rises are just around the corner in these markets. The broad regional markets are recording relatively sedate growth, which is balanced by accelerated market demand and home values across many of the coastal and lifestyle markets, while regions linked with the mining sector and the resources sector remain weak. Sydney dwelling values rose a further 0.6% in October, taking property values 66% higher since the current growth cycle commenced back in June 2012. Despite some concerns around unit supply levels, the performance of houses and units has shown little difference over the past year. Sydney house values are 10.9% higher, while unit values have increased by a slightly lower 9.1%. Low stock levels are continuing to create some level of urgency among Sydney buyers. With approximately 22,000 properties advertised for sale over the past month, total listing numbers remain 10.1% lower than at the same time last year, and roughly half the number of listings compared with five years ago. Overall, the headline growth rate across the Australian housing market remains strong, but the annual growth rate does remain softer than it was a year ago. With the pace of value growth accelerating over the second half of 2016, it may be the case that the annual rate of growth starts to track higher than last year's measure over the coming months. While a higher rate of capital gains has been good news for many homeowners, many prospective buyers are now stretched for affordability. In the highest growth market, Sydney, household incomes have risen by 25% over the past years and dwelling values are 62% higher. The disconnect between the appreciation of home values and incomes is creating significant hurdles to enter the housing markets, particularly that loans with less than a 20% deposit also incur additional impost of lenders' mortgage insurance. Higher entry and exit costs are another barrier for high transaction numbers. Government charges, including stamp duty on the purchase of a medium-priced Sydney dwelling, have increased by 72% over the past five years, while the median dwelling price has increased by a much lower, but still high, 58%. Government charges in Sydney and Melbourne are now substantially higher compared with the other capital cities. Additionally, there is a growing imbalance between rent and dwelling values, which is once again more pronounced in Sydney and Melbourne, where rental yields are pushing new record lows due to the rapid appreciation in dwelling values, while rents remain relatively flat. 
Higher yielding capital cities such as Hobart, Canberra, Brisbane and Adelaide, where the typical gross rental yield on the house is at least 4%, may start to become more attractive to investors because of the healthier yield and also the earlier state in the housing market cycle. Another pain point of the marketplace can clearly be seen in the significant supply of apartments that have been approved and are now under construction. While there are no real concerns around detached housing supply, the number of units under construction within high-rise towers has surged to unprecedented highs. Such high levels of apartment development have caused lenders to tighten their risk assessments across key inner-city apartment markets. While there are a growing number of factors that indicate the housing market is likely approaching a peak, it does appear that low mortgage rates are likely to keep a floor under housing demand. Additionally, investors who comprise about 48% of all new mortgage originations are progressively stepping up their presence in the market. With other asset classes providing low returns or higher volatility, it's likely that housing will continue to be an appealing choice for many looking to invest. For more analysis and research about Australia's housing market, make sure you visit our website at www.corelogic.com.au